Let's talk about reciprocal functions. Here is the standard equation of a reciprocal function. It's y is equal to a over x minus h plus k. The vertical asymptote is x equals h. The horizontal asymptote is y is equal to k. Now, a tells you if you have a vertical stretch or a vertical shrink. If a is greater than one, you're dealing with a vertical stretch. And if a, the absolute value of a, if it's less than one or between zero and one, you're dealing with a vertical shrink. Now here's the parent function, y equals one over x. This graph has a generic shape that looks like this. When a is positive, when it's greater than zero, the graph is going to exist in quadrants one and three. Now, when a is negative, let's say if we have y equals negative one over x, the graph will exist in quadrants two and four. So this is quadrant two, this is quadrant four. So those are some things you want to know when graphing reciprocal functions, which are the same as rational functions, or very similar to it. So let's focus on this particular reciprocal function. We can see that h is 3, k is 1. So the vertical asymptote, which is x is equal to h, it's going to be x is equal to 3. If you set x minus 3 equal to 0 and solve for x, you'll get x is equal to 3. For the horizontal asymptote, it's simply y is equal to whatever number we see here. So in this case, it's going to be y is equal to 1. Now, let's go ahead and draw a rough sketch for this graph. So at x equals 3, we're going to have a vertical asymptote. And at y equals 1, we're going to have a horizontal asymptote. Now, if all we wanted was a rough sketch of the graph, because A is positive, we know the graph will be in this quadrant and in this quadrant. That is, the quadrants defined by the horizontal and vertical asymptotes, not necessarily by the x and y axis. But to get a more accurate graph, what we can do is we can plot a few points. So I'm going to pick an x value, one unit to the right of the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to go with x equals 4, and also one unit to the left of that, and x equals 2. And I also want the y-intercept, so I'm going to use 0 as well. So plug in the numbers into this equation. Starting with 4, we have y is equal to 2 over 4 minus 3 plus 1. 4 minus 3 is 1, 2 over 1 is 2, so 2 plus 1, we get 3. Now, if I were to plug in 0, I mean x equals 2, we would get this. So 2 minus 3 is negative 1, 2 over negative 1 is negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Now let's get the x-intercept. Let's replace x with 0. And I forgot about the plus 1. So this is 2 over negative 3 plus 1. We can replace 1 with 3 over 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Negative 2 over 3 plus 3 over 3 is positive 1 third. 
So plotting these points, we have x is 4, y is 3. So we have a point there. When x is 2, y is negative 1. And when x is 0, y is 1 third. So we could draw a more accurate sketch with this. Of course, you can add more points to make it even more accurate. But that's a rough sketch of this particular reciprocal function. For those of you who want to quickly access my math and science video playlist, feel free to check out the website video-tutor.net. You'll find playlists on algebra, geometry, trig, pre-cal, calculus, general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, statistics, and other topics as well. And you can also access my final exam review videos on this website, in addition to my test prep videos. And there's some other links that you can explore here as well. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Let's try another example. So let's say we have the reciprocal function y is equal to negative 4 over x plus 1 plus 2. Feel free to pause the video if you want to try this example. So let's identify the horizontal and the vertical asymptotes. So we can see that our k value is 2. So the horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to 2. For our vertical asymptote, if we set x plus 1 equal to 0 and solve for x, we're going to get our h value, which is negative 1. So the vertical asymptote is x is equal to negative 1. With this information, we can go ahead and graph the reciprocal function. So we have the vertical asymptote at negative 1. And we have a horizontal asymptote at 2. First, I need to put this in. So at y equals 2, we have our vertical asymptote. Now, we do have a negative sign in front of the 4. So we know the graph is going to look something like this. Now, let's go ahead and make a table. So let's pick one number to the left of the vertical asymptote. I'm going to try negative 2. So plug in negative 2 into the original formula we'll have this. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Negative 4 divided by negative 1 is positive 4 plus 2. That will give us 6. Now we can also get another point to the left of the vertical asymptote. So if we try negative 1, actually we can't try negative 1. Let's try negative 3. If we plug in negative 3, negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. Plus 2, that will give us 4. Now let's pick two points to the right of the vertical asymptote. We can try the y-intercept where x is 0 and when x is 1. When x is 0, we get 0 plus 1, which is 1 on the bottom negative 4 divided by 1 is negative 4 plus 2 that will give us negative 2 and if we were to plug in positive 1 1 plus 1 is 2 4 divided by 2 is 2 2 plus 2 is this should be negative 4 by the way negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus 2 that will give us 0 
So that gives us the x-intercept. So plotting the points, we have negative 2, 6, which should be here, and then negative 3, 4. At 0, we have negative 2, and at 1, we have 0. Now let's get some additional points. We don't have to do this, but just to make a more accurate graph. Let's pick a negative 4 and positive 2. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So we have 4 over 3 plus 2. 4 over 3 is like 1.33. Plus 2, that's going to be about 3.33. Now, if we were to plug in positive 2, we would have this. 2 plus 1 is 3. So this is like negative 1.33 plus 2, which is about point, positive 0. 0.67. So at negative 4, it's around 3.33. So just above 3. So it's over here somewhere. And 2, when x is 2, it's about 0.67, so just under 1. So we can see that the graph looks something like this. So that's how we can draw a rough sketch of this particular reciprocal function. And as long as you plug in points, it's going to help you to create a more accurate graph. By the way, for those of you who want access to more related content, if you check the links in the description section by clicking on more, you'll see other videos that I have on simplifying rational expressions, adding, dividing, multiplying them, even graphing rational functions, which is somewhat similar to graphing reciprocal functions. So feel free to take a look at uh, these links when you get a chance.